Father, we give you all the praise because all things are from you, for you, and unto you shall all men come. We thank you because you are the center of everything that exists. And without you, nothing exists that can actually exist in reality. Today we are asking that, Lord, as we come before you, you will send bigger light, greater light into our spirit, man. And by the reason of this particular engagement and fellowship with you, the reality behind the reason why you have created us shall be made to blossom in our spirit. And we will stop running and facing and pursuing shadows. But we will be individuals who have come to grapple with the essence of our existence. And in this we will find fulfillment and in this we will find definition for our reality in life. Spirit of the living God, we depend on you for wisdom. And we are asking that you will open us up to the mystery that has been kept before we were made available in this world so that our profiting and purpose can be maximally realized in our time. Lord, we ask that Lord today you will dismantle every structure of ignorance built because of the precept, because of the ideology, because of the thinking, because of the cultural limitations that have actually surrounded our lives. And today you will cause us to enter into the realm of absolute liberty that comes with the revelation of the truth that is in your son Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Lord, we ask that at the end of this study, you will bring every one of us to the realm where there shall be no more limitation and no possibility shall be made so clear to us and that no one outside of us shall be able to define or limit or restrict how far we can go in life anymore. Thank you, Father, for your light and wisdom. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. This evening, we are studying something very crucial. Defining and finding your purpose in life. Defining and finding your own purpose in life. Many people are afraid of death because they are not sure whether they have fulfilled their assignment in life. As a result of that, they are not prepared to face death. If you see anyone that is seriously living in fear of death, you need to be aware of the fact that what makes any man to be afraid of death is not death in itself. It is the consciousness that someone has a feeling that perhaps he has not come to terms with why he was born and the person is not sure that he has actually fulfilled the essence for which the creator has brought him into life. Otherwise, for everyone, like Paul who said, I have finished the race, I have finished my course. You see that there will be that joy to embrace death when death comes. Because after a person has fulfilled his purpose in life, it's good to go 
to rest in the bosom of his maker. But when a person has the psychological or spiritual awareness that he has been doing many things, but he has not been doing that for which he has been brought into life. So there is a reason for that person to live in fear, for that person to be agitated, for that person to always have a sense of lack of preparation to face eternity. I would like to say that purpose is very key. And when purpose is not known, life is a waste. When purpose is not defined, destiny is undermined. Destiny is abused and misused. You know, in life, there are five major questions everyone is alive trying to answer. There are five questions. Everything you see anyone doing, you are trying to answer any of these five questions. 99% of men could not find answer to these questions. And that's why 99% of men are really walking all through the clock looking for what they don't really understand what they are really looking for. And you need to answer this question in order to you are made to live a fulfilled life. And the first of that question is who am I? We call it the question of identity. If you don't come to understand who you are, you will be making frantic effort to try to live, to meet up to other people's perception, other people's opinion. It could be the opinion of your parents, maybe the perception of your teachers, it may be the perception of the society, it may be the perception of the cultural values or cultural thinking of the environment from where you were made or you were, you were, you were, you were raised, I mean. It may be, you know, the, the, the social evolving, you know, attitude and what the society actually term or defined to be success or what they call failure. So, who am I? So many people try to find identity in things that are not just real. And until a person could define his identity in accordance with the will of his maker, that individual will continue to pursue the wind and get his life enmeshed in what we call rat race. So who am I? Who are you? The second question is, where am I coming from? Where am I coming from? When you are disconnected from your source, you are likely to lose tab with your reality in life. When the fish is out of water, its time in life is already predetermined. When a tree is out of the ground in the soil, his time lag has already been predetermined. When a bird is out of the wind. So, the same thing when a man is actually disconnected from God. He's finished. So, when an individual has lost touch with 
is source. When you say, where am I from? You are saying, what is my source? When you can't trace your source, you will be lost in transit. So where am I coming from? It is where you are coming from that determines your potentials, that determines how far you can go, that determines your possibilities in life. The third question is the question of what am I here for? Why am I here? We say that that talks about the question of purpose, which we are going to talk more about this evening. What is my purpose? What is my assignment? What is my mission? What is my reason for being in existence? When you don't understand your purpose, you will misuse your life. You misuse your energy. You misuse your opportunity. You misapply your possibility and opportunities. When you don't know the real essence of a thing, you are likely to undermine, to undervalue, to underage, to misuse, to misapply, to misrepresent, and to misapply the essence of a thing. Purpose is coming to tune with the reason why you exist in life. When you don't know it, other people will try to teach you. And one of the reasons why many people are living false life is that we are trying to live to meet up to other people's opinion about us. And when we live like that, life will lose its essence, lose its joy and value. The reason why we see so many strange things happening, pressure around us, is because the true essence of why God, our Maker, has made us, has been lost to so many people. So we are looking for what exactly does not constitute God's original intention for our lives. And the more we pursue those things, the more empty, the more frustrated the more confused, the more meaningless life has become for many people. Why am I here? This is a question of purpose. The fourth question is what can I do? What are my potential? What are the capacity that I carry? Because I know my purpose that operates and that creates in me understanding of ability that God has created within me in order to fulfill the purpose for which he has created me to be. When you don't understand your potential, you will underestimate and underuse under explore under deliver on your destiny and the fifth question where am I going that is the question of destiny by the time I finish my race at what point at what spot should I find myself an average human being is really bothered about these questions. Everything that we do, every work that we do, every relationship we enter into, all our pursuits are directly or indirectly connected to our attempts to answer each of these five questions. Everyone wants to know himself or prove himself, establish himself, or enhance himself or paint himself or project himself want to show that he has an understanding of who he is even though we don't know for, for most of us don't know 
Everyone wants to prove that he knows where he's coming from. But many of us don't really know. Many of us have been disconnected from our source. There are many of us that really want to prove that we know why we are here. We know our purpose. But the truth of the matter is, we do so many good things that are outside of the reason why we were born. In fact, the best many of us are doing is to photocopy. To try to be like somebody else or to be like something else. Or some of us actually want to impress other people outside of the original reason why we were born, why we were created. And for some of us, we live our lives, you know, in order to try to prove our energy, our ability, our potential. While the remaining one of us and all of us too want to reach destiny, we want to pursue life so that we can reach our destination in life. So how do we find purpose? That's just the major um, attempt of this study tonight. How do you find purpose? In fact, purpose is not outside of you. Purpose is already created with you and in you. It is not about finding it, it's about discovering it. And I'm going to dwell on two scriptures. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse number 10. The book of Ephesians, epistle of Apostle Paul to people at Ephesus. Said, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So the reason why we were created in Christ Jesus is that we were created not to go to heaven. You are created not to go to heaven. You are created not to just walk around on this planet earth. You are created for good works. You and I were created to walk we are created for assignment. We are created for responsibilities. This is different from what many religious folks actually think. That we are brought into Christ so that we can make heaven. No, we are brought into Christ because we are his workmanship. We are not created to just dance or sing or to speak in tongue. We are created for duty. For work. I, I'm, I, we are not created just for struggle. Many of us don't know the difference between work and struggle. Because there is a particular assignment. When God created Adam, the Bible says God created him and put his image on him. So the first thing is the person that can really know you and me very well like God has never existed. So no one can know you, no one can know your purpose except the one that created you. you see, and when God created anything, he has already finished that thing before he created it. Before you are brought to this world, you are already finished. It's just like this phone the company that manufactured this phone they put everything together and after they put everything together they tested this phone they tested the ability of the phone to receive calls and to send out calls to receive messages to access internet you know to stop voices and all the and at the end of the day, when they realize that the work has been done, they put their image so that you can know which com company actually created it. So when they finish everything, they put a manual 
a paper, the manual. The manual gives a lot of promises. This phone can take message. This phone can give information. This phone can access internet. This phone can store a lot of information. They roll those promises out. Why did they do that? They did that because that phone has been tested before it is sold out. In the same way, the one that created you and me knew you before you came. That's what Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says. Before you were born, before I actually put you in your mother's womb, I know you. And God placed that manual you know, in our hand, Bible. Just to tell you and me the promises of God. Because you have already tested. God knew what you are capable of. Before he introduced you into your mother's womb. Before you came into the world. So the first thing I want you to see from this scripture. Is that we were created for good works. We were created in Christ Jesus for good works. This assignment that God created us for has been already ordained before we came. So it's not that maybe after God actually created you, he started thinking of what to do with you. No. He made up his mind. He had a plan. He had a thought. He has a purpose. He had a need. He had a vacuum. He has an answer. You want to use your life, you know, to produce for certain questions which nobody could actually respond to. That's very important. So that's why there is a warranty on every original product. The warranty of God on your life that you will deliver is because God has already tested your life before he introduced you. Just like this phone producer, manufacturer, would have tested. The battery of this particular phone will last for eight hours because it has been tested. So when you see any new product, the new product is only new to you. It is not new to the manufacturer. The manufacturer has already tested it and used it first before packaging it the product and putting it in a particular you know pack and put you know a particular leaflet there and said i give you warranty you know every good product has warranty and guarantee so it means that if anything goes wrong return it back and i will take care i will i will pay for the transport and i will pay for whatever it will cost to repair this particular item. I have the spare part. And so, you have to understand God's purpose for human being. Number one, the purpose of God for you is for total restoration. The purpose of God for the people of God in his kingdom. When we talk about the kingdom, we are talking about rulership. We are talking about rulership. We are not talking about a man ruling over another man. We are talking about the fact that God has created a space, an environment for you and me to actually dominate, to control, to as our domain, to rule for him. He has created domain for everyone to exercise on behalf of God with delegated authority, with the backing of heaven. Some in science, some in business, some in ministry, some in banking, some in aviation, some in entertainment, some in fashion. God has created environment for everyone, you know, to find essence of your existence and to rule over certain domain of life on behalf of God. So, God created us in order to rule this planet earth for him okay so he has created us in order for our life your life and my life for restoration 
of all things. Restore. Re to revive. In order to bring things back to its original intention. So God created us in order to restore us back to himself. God created us in order to restore our dominion. Created us to restore dominion. To bring us back to the place where we can control our domain for him. Okay. God has also created us in order for us to have good works. In order for us to do good works. That's why God has brought salvation. Salvation means to salvage life. So the question now is, what are my good works for which I was born? What are my good works? What are the good works for which God has created you and created me? And that takes us to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 from verse 7 to verse 15, which is going to be the bulk of our study this evening. What are the good works? God has created us for good works. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse number 7, we find God opening our eyes. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So we can see here the Bible says that we are speaking wisdom. Wisdom there means secret. There are secrets about you that is not known to your parents, not known to your teachers, not known to your world. It is only known to the one that has created you. Wisdom in a mystery is a secret. God has a secret about your life and my life that He has kept to Himself. He said, God has ordained or kept this secret before the foundation of the earth. So there is something about your purpose. That can only be found in the secret wisdom of God. The Bible calls it, it is in the Eden. So there are certain information about your life and my life. That are meant for our glory. He said number one, they are meant for our glory. They are meant for our destiny. Destiny is talking about where God is taking you in life. Glory here is talking about you, you and myself, our full weight. Our full measurement. Our full essence. And nobody can really describe your full weight in life. Apart from the person who actually created you. Thank you Jesus. So the secret about your life. Is not known by anyone. The secret God has concerning your purpose and my purpose. Is hidden in God. Mm. So no one in this world can really actually correctly tell you the real reason or purpose behind your existence. In verse 9. He said, I'll be it. Verse 8 and 9. He said, Wish none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would have crucified the Lord. They would have crucified the Lord of glory. But as the reason, I has not seen, neither ear has heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. 
So the secret behind your purpose and my purpose in life was only eating in God and the only person that is aware of that secret is the Holy Spirit. But when Adam fell, Holy Spirit departed from him. And the means by which Adam could understand the purpose of his life had been taken away from him. So that means that from the time that Adam fell, Adam became unaware, ignorant of the real essence for which he was created. Thank you, Father. So the truth about the life of Adam was kept away from Adam. Because the person who alone has access to God to bring about the understanding of what God had in his mind, in his thoughts, in his thinking about the reason why Adam was created has been withdrawn from Adam because Adam fell. So, your father, your mother, your teacher, your brother, your sister, psychologists and uh, psychiatrists, they are too, you know, what do you call it? Ignorant. To be able to describe and define correctly what the essence of your life and purpose should be. No one can genuinely and correctly describe your mission in life. No one. And that's why you need to understand whatever anybody say about you cannot be final about you. Whatever your teacher, whatever your, 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 what do you call it, your assessment. That's why you, with nobody can use examination, educational system, to really describe your destiny and your future correctly. No one. You know, it is the education system that said that you score 20 over 100, you are below average. That is not true. Examination is not just for every time. It's just for a particular moment. You may be at a time actually coming to an exam when you are not feeling fine. And that may make you to score zero. And that cannot define the rest of your life. The marks you score in a test, in an examination, is not good enough. Somebody cannot say that he studied your IQ. And by the reason of that, he discovered that you are an average, you are a mediocre. No, you have about 500 billion cells in your brain. And no human being has exceeded beyond 11%. An average human being uses 10% of his brain. Anyone that uses 11 is referred to as a genius. 11%. So, no one can use intellectual calculation to determine what your future and what your destiny and potential. You cannot use that either to describe yourself. So the person who can seriously, genuinely describe you is the one that created you. Okay? So no human being can know the truth about your life. Many people want to tell you what you should be. Many people want to describe what your purpose in life should look like. And that is why you too, you are trying to please some people. That is why you want to look like somebody that understands what is in vogue. That is why you try to dress in a way that everybody is actually dressing. That is why you want to make your hair do to fit in into the general, you know, uh, what do you call it, pattern. Of the air do that is in vogue globally is a sign that you are ignorant of your value. Any attempt to be like other people, any attempt to actually you know fall into the acceptable pattern of what is going on is a description that somebody has lost touch to his real purpose in life. The, your, your understanding of your purpose in life makes you to stand out from everybody if you are afraid to be different from everybody it is a sign 
that other people's opinion has taken over the real essence of your destiny. Okay? That's why sometimes we are always, very, we have to be very careful about the fashion and the trend and what is in vogue. Many times, our desire to be part of what is in vogue is a way of telling you and me that we have lost touch with our originality. When you realize that something is actually in vogue, you want to be part of it, it is an indictment. You need to discover your purpose and then your full weight, your true essence, the genuine reason why God has created you will begin to show forth. Let me say this. Your destiny and my destiny is not outside over there. It's not in certificates. It's not in books. It's not in popular opinion. It's not in what is in trending in social you know, media. It's not the applause of people. It's not in the opinion of others. It's not what other people have said that is good or what, that, what, the, what those people have said that is bad. Our true essence, our true destiny, our purpose in life can be found in God. Only in God. The truth about you can only be found in the one who has created you and me. Not in college, not in degrees, not in certificate, not in who you are connected to, what who you know, who you don't know. Not in the ideas in your brain, not in your intellectual ability. Not in the test that you pass, not the exam that you pass. See what we are reading here, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But he said, but it is written, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not, have not had, what has not entered into the heart of man, the things which God, God, God has prepared, it is God that determines our true potential, it's God that determines our purpose, are prepared for them. You know, we can only find real definition for our lives inside God, not outside of him. There no one has conceived what you are going to become and no one can conceive it. Okay? In verse 10, it now says, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. He has revealed them by his Holy Spirit. So what does that mean? Your elder, your parents, your pastor, your friends, your teacher, your president, cannot truly describe from their own understanding what the essence of your purpose in life will be or should be. And we need to have this understanding. So the key to the kingdom secret about your purpose is the Holy Spirit. The key to unveil the secret about your life and its genuine essence is the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit, you will be living another life different from the one you were created to live. Without the Holy Spirit, you will be busy doing many good things, but which are still not what you were created to do. Without the Holy Spirit, Hmm. you will be using your energy you will be using your time you will be using your talent you will be using so many gifts but you still realize that you are not really functioning in the real reason purpose for which you were created other people will clap for you but you will still be finding in yourself a sense of emptiness. If there is any being who can, who you really need to embrace when it comes to matter of understanding the reason, finding the purpose, and executing the purpose for which you exist, that person that you need to embrace, that I need to embrace, that we need to embrace, is the person of the Holy Spirit. 
He's the only one that knows the real truth about you, about your purpose, about your chin, his own liver. Or another person shocking his life, burning, you know, his own uh, lungs and kidney with cigarettes or marijuana or drugs or just humanizing and just, you know, it is a clear cut that that person is ignorant of what is in store for his purpose. People that enjoy, indulge in, in pleasures that have grievous tempt, I mean, uh, consequences, they are people that are ignorant of the reason where they exist. I want to tell you that. When you don't have an understanding of your purpose, you will misuse, you will abuse, you will damage, you will obstruct, you will hinder, and you will frustrate God from establishing his purpose in your life. I remember when I was very young, I was raised in a very, uh, very dangerous environment. An environment where young rascality, indulgence, youthful exuberances were very, very rife. But I thank the Lord, the Lord engaged and encountered my life. And I began to have visions about my future. I began to have an understanding of what God wants to use my life to, to do. You know, I realized that I had temptations like many other youths like myself many, many years ago. But somehow I found a restriction and a constraint in my inner man. Many times I was tempted to do things that so many of my friends were doing then. But the vision and the dreams and the light and the understanding of my future that God was placing before me. I remember the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 actually made a very strong impression on my mind when I was around 20 years or thereabout. Before you were born, I knew you, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. And that scripture kept coming in my mind. When I have temptation to, to do certain things, you know, that scripture will spring up again. So I realized that I could have also wasted my life like many of my friends at that time were doing, in the name of enjoying guests, enjoying fashion, enjoying drugs, enjoying life, I want to just, you know, engage in youthful exuberances. So see, what will keep you from destroying yourself? If your conscious awareness of the weight of glory attached to your life, the purpose of your destiny, when it becomes clear to you, it restrains you from damaging your life, from destroying your life, from restricting your life, limiting your life. It doesn't matter how many people are destroying theirs. Once the light of the purpose of God done in a person's house, you will find out that you will not be able to take permission from yourself to ruin yourself. The pressure will be there. Temptation will be there. I just realized that rather than comp I mean, uh, what do you call it, compromising with my mates, I'll find myself in a place where I will lie down and cry and cry that the Lord will deliver me from those temptations. The Lord will deliver my heart. Many times I felt like doing certain things and when I see the picture of the future, I know that if I should do those things that time, I would have aborted my future by myself. When discipline is lacking, destiny will be missing. And it takes the working of the Holy Spirit on a person's life. So when you look at the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28, very important. It's also repeated uh, in the book of, uh, what do you call it, Acts chapter 2. 
You know, Joel chapter 2 verse 28. So you see that anybody can do anything. But when the Holy Spirit captured a person's heart, you see that that person will now begin to live. He said, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servant, upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out of my spirit and I will show wonders. So when the spirit of God begins to engage a person's heart, you realize that that person will find it difficult you know, to waste his destiny in frivolity. Because you begin to see visions, begin to see dreams, begin to see possibilities. Okay? And only the Holy Spirit knows the deep things about God. Look at what the Bible says in that scripture, chapter 2 of First Corinthians again. You know, verse number 10. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the things of the spirit of God. That means as a human being, you can only come into consciousness with your purpose by the spirit of God that is in you, the spirit of man that is in you. Nobody can know what God has kept secret about you also, apart from the spirit of God that is in God. Now verse 11 now says, it says very, very important for what man, that's verse 11 now, you know, but verse, verse 12 says, verse 10 says, but God has revealed them unto us, and verse 10, now verse 10, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, said the spirit has said all things, yea, the deep things of God, there are deep things in God, and how do you now get those things that are in God, kept as secret for your life? You only get them by delving into the deep of depth of God. By, by embracing God, by running into God. You know, Holy Spirit is the one that can actually go into that deep and go and excavate what God has kept secret in himself about you and unveil it to you. So coming to church is not just about clapping. It's about the engagement with the Spirit of the living God. So the Spirit of God is like... Um, it's like a Sasha. It search out what God has in his mind concerning every one of us. Okay? And then bring it to our consciousness. Sometimes we bring it through some other people that are spiritually, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Discerning, discerning. To bring certain things to us. Okay? But to any natural man, God cannot trust any natural man to bring an understanding of our purpose to us. He cannot even trust your own brain. To bring his purpose. Okay? And only the person that can know the thought of God can unveil the mind of God about any man. Holy Spirit is the one that has the liberty, has the opportunity, has the precise, the exclusive right to delve into the mind of God and then bring it to human consciousness. Okay? The Bible says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So, and I want us to know that God is interested in bringing his purpose, his plan, his thoughts to our mind. You know, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I know the thought that I have concerning you. The thought of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. But only Holy Spirit can actually unveil that to any man. I love what um, David said in the book of Psalm 139. Very powerful revelation. Very powerful. It's a revelation about what David discovered concerning his purpose and how he was able to unveil it. I was able to break into it and search it out and walk in them. In Psalm 139, you know, from verse 11, it says, very importantly, he said, I say, if I say, surely darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. He said, yes, the darkness abideth not the darkness heedeth not from thee but the night shineth as the day the darkness and the light are both alike to thee so there is nothing hidden for God for thou hast possessed my reins thou hast covered me in my mother's womb that is God is the one that puts me there he possessed my purpose verse 14 says I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that my soul 
know it right well. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's a revelation. Verse 13 says, 15 says, My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and closely wrought in the lowest part of the earth, that thy eyelid did see my substance, yet being imperfect, and in thy book all my numbers were written, which in continuous were fashioned, whereas yet there was none of them. How precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are too... So what is this passage saying? Say, even you yourself, if God actually come to you to, to try to un get your understanding about the reason and the purpose of your life, you will argue with God. And everyone that God has used in the Bible, the first time when God opened them up to the reality of why he has created them, none of them agree with God. When God told Abraham, you are going to be father of many nations, he said, me that I'm barren. When God came to Moses and said, I'm raising you to become the leader of the first race, first nation, powerful nation. He said, me, ordinary shepherd in the, in the dry desert. You know, when God came to Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah argued, I'm a man of unclean lips. When God came to Hosea, Hosea said, I'm just a shepherd, though. I'm not the son of a prophet. When God came to, uh, uh, to, 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 to Gideon, Gideon said, I am the least in my family, and my family is the least in our tribe. Our tribe is the least in the land. And you are saying that I am a man, great man of valor. Rehab, you are going to be the patriarch, matriarch, sorry, matriarch of, of the family of the Savior. He said, me, that I am a prostitute. So he said, when I look at all of these things, they are too, they are too what do you call it, too much for me to understand. Because of our time, we realize that Jesus Christ and his disciples were going to the book of Matthew. Chapter 16, from verse 13. And he asked a very powerful question. He said, Who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I am? When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippa, he asked his disciples, say, Who do men say that I, I, the son of man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah's, or one of the prophets, he said unto them, But who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered, said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed this unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Here yeah, Jesus Christ is actually saying that everybody will have an opinion about your life. If I in this place, all of them have said something good. Listen, the fact that people are saying something good about your life doesn't mean that they are correct. Don't rejoice and don't trust other people's assessment of your destiny. Don't let what other people say about you be the reason for your sense of, of definition for your life. Because those who say, Osana today can still come back to say, crucify him tomorrow. And no matter what the good anybody says, it cannot be compared. That's what David said in that Isaiah 139. He said, the thoughts of God are too many, too many. Nobody in his natural intellectual capacity can fathom the height and the depth, the length and the breadth of what God has conceived concerning your life. Your husband doesn't know who you are. Your wife doesn't know who you are. Your parents don't know who you are. Sometimes your pastor may not know who you are, except by the Spirit of God in his life. Just like we have Simon in the temple, when they brought Jesus Christ, he, she, he, she, he was able to pass it by the Holy Ghost. That this boy, this child is raised for the rising and falling of many in Israel. Until the Holy Spirit reveal a man 
no man can really understand the weight of the glory that is hidden in his destiny. So it's very important that you don't also argue with God like Gideon did. I said that I'm the smallest. There are some of us that have developed inferiority complex. Because you have tried so many things and you have failed in so many things, you have got to a point where you started thinking so small, eating so small, dressing so small, having so smallish minded friends, you know, around you. You just pursue small agenda, small goals, small ambition, small vision. You know, come out of that particular small mentality. And rise up by the help of the Holy Spirit into the fullness of the glory, the weight of who God actually described, actually God has actually made you to be. He said, we don't know and we cannot know in our faculty. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father. But my Father. By the help of the Holy Spirit, that is when how anyone can actually genuinely have an, a, a very good description of his purpose in life. He said, verse 12, verse 11, for, who, what, for what man knoweth the things of man, but the spirit of man that is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. For we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. So until we embrace the person of the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to really understand the secret behind the purpose for which we are born. Many people will say so many things, but they will not be able to say the correct thing. And when you are not aware to, you will see that your life will only be gravitating. You will be struggling to please men, to fit in into the open of people about your life. No man's opinion is worthy of your attention to the extent that you make that to make you sad or happy. Because man's opinion is theoretical. It has nothing to do about the formation about the exercise, about the manifestation, establishment of God's original intention for your life. The person's opinion that is very important is the opinion of God and God has hidden his opinion in himself. Only the Holy Spirit of God can go into God and bring out of the depth of God the opinion of God, the purpose of God, the plan of God, the secret of God in his wisdom and make it known to you when you embrace him, when you relate with him, when you fellowship with him, when you welcome him, when you operate in his understanding, when you are conscious of him and you are willing to allow him to take his place in your life. So let me quickly say this. You know, God has his own thoughts about you and me. The thoughts of God about you will always defy your own personal thoughts. The plan of God will always be more than your plan for yourself. Take note of that. So that's why don't depend on your plan. The plan of a man will always be smaller compared to the plan of his maker for his life. Number two, the truth about you is beyond your knowledge. It's beyond your education. It's beyond your certification. Certificate. That's why you see that many great men of our time drop out of school. And that doesn't mean that you should drop out. Bigate did not finish college. That's one of the research. And I've read so many like that too. So your education and your certificate does not really necessarily define you. So don't let your MSc, PhD make you become arrogant. Okay? Acquire information, but don't trust your information. The information you have acquired from man to be the basis of definition of your destiny. Number three, the truth about you can only be believed and received by the spirit in you, your own human spirit, by human spirit, not by your mind. Our human mind has been adjusted to what we have been brought up 
the, the thinking of the environment, the thinking of our family, the talking and the expectation of our parents, the kind of teacher that taught us, the kind of information they put into us, that is what generates what, what, what normally fabricates the workings of our mind. It has to do with the kind of father that raised you, the kind of mother that raised you. And when those people are not there, you raise yourself and with the knowledge of your friends, the environment you are, and that shapes the way human mind operates. But when you allow your spirit to begin to open to the new revelation in the word of God, the word is your spirit can actually receive light and that light can now renew your mind. Drop some of the things that you have imbibed from your mother that have not helped your mother, not helped your father, not helped your uncle, that has not taken them far beyond where they are. And because God is taking you far, while you are not criticizing and condemning them, but you are opening your mind that your spirit can get new insight that can really cause your mind to be renewed. And in the renewal of our mind, new possibilities begin to show up. Because of what you are hearing today, you will become better than your father. You will become better than your mother. You will become better than anyone that has ever existed in your lineage. You become better than everyone in your community. You become better than everyone in your nation. You become better than what you think you want to become in life. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has never come to the thought of the heart of man. There is something about you that you have never been aware of. Nobody could ever fathom that you. Let me tell you, sis, you are going to become a, a celebration of the glory of God. I see a great destiny emerging through you. When you get to that particular height, remember your pastor. Remember me. Because I know you are going to become a great person. I know you are going to become a great person. And I would like you to know that as I round up quickly, that's very important that every one of us come to terms with the fact that the Bible says you are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Stop arguing with God about what you, are, you cannot actually become. Because God cannot lie concerning your destiny. Stop it. Stop it. Let me read verse 12, 13, 14, 15 of this same scripture for you. He said, Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know, that we might know the things that are freely, freely, freely given to us. Is it not interesting that we love to really pursue things that we have to pay so much for? And we don't recognize those things that God has given to us freely. We don't value those things because they are free. Is that which things also we speak? We speak not in the words which man's wisdom t shirt, but with the Holy Ghost t shirt comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Our intellectual knowledge is actually too weak to fathom the purpose of the secret of God behind our rising in life. We need to really know that what we have learned in school is not sufficient information. It is the information the Holy Spirit actually brings from the bosom of God that becomes a revelation that can catapult us into the height of glory. That revelation is locating your spirit in the name of Jesus. He said, But the natural man receiveth not, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is not judged. For who had known the mind of the Lord that he may scratch him? But we have the mind of Christ. What is he saying here? If you depend on your natural ability, you will always contend with the person of the Holy Spirit. But when you have allowed the Holy Spirit to reign, to rule, to control, to guide, and that means that you have, we have to be conscious of the fact that in our own intellectual ability, we cannot excavate the depths of God's intention for bringing us here. We will need the help of the spirit that is in God to travel into the depth of God to bring what God has hidden as a secret in himself about your formation and about your existence and bring it to your spirit and unveil it to your spirit and by that awareness we begin to operate in the consciousness of the revelation of what the spirit of God is unveiling to us. 
So the secret of your purpose is not outside of you, it's inside. He said, the Spirit of God shall come and he shall teach you many things and shall bring to your remembrance all that I've taught you. He said, he shall abide. He's the great teacher. shall abide. But when a person is not understanding this, there's likelihood that rather than allowing the Holy Spirit to teach, to bring the mind of God, you just realize that we'll be using the mind of the world. And the mind of the world is actually a restriction, a distraction, a limitation, a frustration to the activity that the Holy Spirit wants to carry out for the formation of our purpose and destiny in life. Without the Holy Spirit, no one can fulfill destiny. So five things or four things, four or five things that the Holy Spirit will do as I close now. Holy Spirit will have to do, you know, in our lives so that um, we can, number one, you realize that Holy Spirit, it is, it is only Holy Spirit that can judge you and judge you correctly. What the word judge there mean? Only Holy Spirit can assess you. The real assessment of your value, of your destiny, of your potential, of your purpose can only be unveiled correctly by the Holy Spirit. That's why you cannot be a Christian that is just living anyhow. There are some people that are just anyhow believer. They don't have a space. They don't have any strategy to be conscious, to listen, to hear. I the Holy Spirit want to talk in your spirit or want to use somebody else or want to use message or want to use anything to communicate a reality about your life. So it's very important that we stop taking the Holy Spirit of God for granted. So it is only Holy Ghost that we allow you and I to know what God knows. There is something that only God knows about you. And it is only Holy Spirit that can reveal that which God knows that he has kept secret from every other person. He has kept secret from you too. Until you allow the Holy Spirit that lives in God to open it up. So only Holy Spirit can actually judge or assess you correctly. Number two. So I want you to also know that it is only Holy Spirit that can allow you to do beyond your limit of education can take you. Your certificate is good, but only Holy Spirit can take you beyond what education in school can take you. There is more to your life than what your cerebral wisdom can accommodate. And you only can find that, that reality only when Holy Spirit is allowed. So that's why you see that people that really want to rise in God to fulfill great destiny, there are people that are conscious of what the Holy Spirit is actually bringing into their consciousness. Because I think your teachers don't know. In fact, Holy Spirit wants you to know more than your teachers. Psalm 119 verse 99 and I said, I know more than my teachers. Because your, your words are my precept, my meditation. Number three, you'll have to understand also that Holy Spirit protects you and me from doing good things just because those things are good. I would like you to know that not everything that is good is from God. Only Holy Spirit will help us to know the difference. Everybody will clap for you. Everybody will hail you. But Holy Spirit says, this is not what you are created to become. I've read the story of a man that became a medical doctor. And then one day the whole family, the whole community want to celebrate him at the end of the year. And they were singing his song. You know, there are certain times when what you are feeling good about is what is irritating God. Everybody is feeling good about your success in this and that. And God is actually irritated about it. Number one, either what people are really praising you for, those things are contrary to what God has created you for, or that what people are celebrating you for are far, far below what God expects you to accomplish for him. So people are praising this man. The father and the mother were happy. The first medical doctor from our village. And when they finished all of this, the man just stood up and with tears on his face. He said, you see, brethren, friends, and people, I want to tell you that today, I want to declare that I've been living my life for all of you. 
I've been living to please my father, my mother. I've been living to please everyone in the family, in the, in the, in the community. You know, so that you can clap, you can feel good that you now have a doctor. But I have not been fulfilling my own destiny. And that man said, today, he dropped the stethoscope. He dropped the, the medical, medical gown or whatever. And that he wanted to go into what he knew God has called him to be. And what is that one? He said he was called to be a gospel singer. Maybe that looks like your case too. That is number what? Number, number three. Holy Spirit is the one that gives you wisdom beyond human reasoning. Give you wisdom beyond your teachers. Give you wisdom beyond what you have learned. Only Holy Spirit can do that. And he has to give us that wisdom because it is in the excavation of that wisdom that the reality of our purpose in life becomes unveiled. You need certain kind of wisdom to break into certain particular reason why you were born. In business, in marriage, in your spiritual life, in the community, in your world, in your generation. Number five, Holy Spirit gives you ability to judge all things correctly. When you are, when you are in, a carrier of the Holy Spirit, you are a, a person that is conscious of the Holy Spirit, your judgment or your assessment of things will not be what you see people you know, look like today. There are many people that are born great and they don't look like it at all. There are some people that are like Rehab, a prostitute, but God knows that they carry in their bosom what it takes in order to bat great men. There are people that are very weak, you know, very fearful, like Gideon, according to human definition. But what God sees, God sees a mighty man of evil. It takes a person that actually carries the Holy Spirit to see what human brain cannot fathom. He said, Who is he? Who, has, who knows the mind of God? Who can instruct him? He said, But we carry the mind of God. The mind of God. Is actually the deposit of the treasure in second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. So we receive this treasure in the earth in this, so that all excellency, the glory of an excellency can belong unto God and not to us. So this evening, I would like you to begin to think: have I ever discovered my purpose? Have I am I really living for the reason why I was born? Or am I living to please? others to fit in into others agenda or I am actually living in absolute agreement with the purpose, the intent, the reason, the plan for which I was born. That is where your joy is. That's where your breakthrough is. That's where your possibility is. That is where your victory is. When you grab with it when Holy Spirit unveil the mind of God, your marital life is settled, your financial life is settled, your career is settled, your journey in life is settled. You cannot afford to have accident that other people have. And I see today, mark the beginning of your destiny in the reality of God's plan. You will no more travel in the wilderness. Your destiny will no more be dictated by other people's opinion. You will no more become football on the leg of players to be kicked left and right. From this moment, your life will go directly in the route that will bring the greatest glory and satisfaction to the one who created you. And you yourself, you will fulfill destiny and enjoy all the dividends that God has kept in store for you before the foundation of the world began. Before I ask you to pray the final prayer, maybe you are there, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. And I just give you an opportunity or you have been a Christian before for one reason or the other you have turned away from the covenant of life in Christ Jesus let me give you an opportunity can you just say this short prayer with faith in your heart with me say Lord Jesus I thank you for giving me this opportunity to hear your word about purpose and to realize that I can't discover I can't fulfill I can't express I can't give back to my purpose without your help I recognize that I'm a sinner and I ask that you forgive me all my sins. I turn away from the devil today and I focus on you. I ask that you find a place in my heart, Lord Jesus. I believe in your coming. I believe in your death. I believe in your resurrection. I believe in your ascension. 
that you did all of this in order to rescue me from all the destruction that the enemy has made available to trap my life. I ask Holy Spirit that you will help me from today. I renounce the devil and his work and I declare Jesus the Lord over my life. I'm a child of God. From today, I'm born again. I'm a new creature. I will never go back to serve the devil. If you have prayed that prayer, I congratulate you. A miracle has just happened in your spirit. You may not feel it, but I want to tell you that the Bible says with, with faith in our heart, we receive salvation. With our mouth, we confess. And to salvation in our heart, we receive righteousness from God. As you have prayed that prayer, the Spirit of God has taken over your heart and a new beginning has just been initiated. And I want you to get the Bible and start reading and join the fellowship of believers around you, in your nation, in your community, in your state. And perhaps you are in Nigeria, in Lagos State, and you are living in the mainland, around the Yanopaja, Bulegba side. The address of this church is on the screen. You can actually fellowship with us. And by the grace of God on Friday, we shall be together again at 5 p.m., in the very terrific, powerful atmosphere of miracles. Don't miss it because God is about to turn your situation around. Your destiny will not be locked down. Every other person, I would like you to just pray this short prayer and say, Oh Lord, my Father, I ask help of the Holy Spirit to open my understanding, to open my spirit to the secret kept before the foundation of the earth about the reason why I came to this world. I am tired of living just to fulfill the expectation and to validate the opinion of other people, of my parents, of my teachers, of my society, of our cultural background. I am opened to receive the light that comes from heaven validated and expressed by the person of the Holy Spirit who alone knows the heart of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of God the Father and who alone can communicate the same to me. I ask, oh God, today shall be the day when there shall be full-blown awareness of my purpose. And I also receive the wisdom and the capacity of God to travel in no other route apart from this route that leads to the maximization of the fulfillment of my destiny in God. Not by my own thinking, not by my own wisdom, not by following popular opinion, but by aligning my life with the leading of the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God, come and help me. Lead me on, open me up, speak to me, open my understanding, give me revelation. I will not live why missing purpose? I shall fulfill my purpose maximally in this life. To the glory of God the Father. To the blessing of my word and to the fulfillment of my destiny. In Jesus name. Amen. Wherever you are praying that prayer from today, your destiny opens up. Your life opens up. Your purpose opens up. You will no more live for others. You will no more live to please others. Your originality shall be enhanced, established, and expressed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. If God is putting it in your hand to partner with us, to be a blessing to this ministry, the account of the ministry shall be displayed. And uh, we trust the Lord that as you place your seed for the expansion of his kingdom, you will enjoy great harvest and you will never know any scarcity in your life anymore. Financially, God will unveil a great mystery about your supply and you will not need to depend on the system of this world anymore because God is raising you as a financial giant. You will fulfill your destiny in Jesus' name. Share testimonies of how this message has blessed you. Together, we shall fulfill the original mandate of God for our lives. In Jesus' name.